जिससे मरत सुख हो सजने सुख जाए गुरु जी का खालसा वाहेगुरु जी की फतेह Olympic 402 Russian Ukrainian AM medium wave short wave pocket radio I actually got a request to cover this radio somebody messaged me and said they really liked it they had one that didn't work and they would like to see me fix it and I'm always up to dig into radios from this part of the world they're always interesting to work on, and they usually perform really damn good. So, Olympic 402. We kind of have our little beach scene at the bottom. Um, there are tons of these on eBay and other marketplaces. This has to be one of the most abundant radios available to buy and they're cheap they're usually between five and ten dollars plus shipping so i got three of them and i would like to we got all we got three colors here we got three flavors i'd like to do another one of those videos where we fix them up and take them out to the desert on a mine exploring trip or something and test them out, out away from the city and the strong signals. So I'll put that at the end of the video, if it happens. So this one is supposed to work. I was looking at this, and there I almost have a question about the sensitivity rating. And let me show that. Of course, being a Soviet radio, it comes with the schematic. And so this sort of caught my eye which is the sensitivity rating which they have at 2.2 microvolts per meter on well CB is is my uh, medium wave or the AM broadcast band so uh, so 2.2 microvolts per meter and then that would be the short wave sensitivity And these are the operating instructions. I'm going to show the sensitivity here thing here real quick. Maybe someone can help explain this to me. So I guess this is the that it worked. The sign offs, the inspection sign offs, and here's the schematic. This uses an integrated circuit. This is the integrated circuit right here, which is a, whatever that is. Uh, we did find, my Russian buddy helped me find the, I think the TCA equivalent, which is all I could find because we can no longer buy parts from Russia. So I was able to find uh, the TCA equivalent that chip however I doubt the chip is what's wrong with it now not to step too far away from the Olympic 402 because that's what this video is about but I do want to talk about this radio a little bit because this is a radio that we fixed in a previous video and this is an excellent performing and this one has an even better rated sensitivity this one's like 0.5 microvolts per meter and this one has the same IC but it has an FET between the IC and the AM bar antenna so keep remember these numbers this one is something like 0.5 microvolts per meter this one is 2.2 uh, microvolts per meter so this is a, a book of Zenith radio service data so let's just look at some sensitivity ratings on some Zenith radios. Okay, so here we have the Royal 10, 12, and 14. Sensitivity, 80 microvolts per meter for 25 milliwatts output. Now keep in mind, 
80 microvolts, 2.2 microvolts. Does that seem realistic that a Zenith radio could be that bad? Okay, here's a Royal 13. Uh, 150 microvolts. Let's just, let's just jump up in here a little bit. Here's a Royal 35. Sensitivity, 100 microvolts. Uh, 80 microvolts. A hundred microvolts. Some of these are really bad. Some of them are 200, 250, 300 microvolts. Here we go. Transoceanic. Does this even give... Let me see if I can find it here. Okay, well here's a Royal 78. 32 microvolts. It's still not even close to the 2.2 that these are rated at. So I don't know if I'm not understanding this right or not reading this right or this is more, more of a test. Look at this one, 200 microvolts. I don't know if I'm, you know, if this is a test rating for testing the performance of the radio and this is some signal to noise radio ratio thing but anyway i'll get off that let's dig into these radios and see what's up with them it will start with red and then we'll do blue and gray so we have nine volts applied we're gonna look at the milliamps so here we go Well, we're at 11.5 milliamps. I do hear some hiss. Like I said, there were these are extremely abundant for sale. I mean, there's hundreds of them, and most of them say not working. So for this one, we have 11.5 milliamps, no activity when we move these, no activity when we move these, but we have hiss like the amplifiers alive. For the blue one, we have similar response. We have 15.2 milliamps. thing is same thing it's some hiss crackling when you turn the volume control but nothing from the front end now for the gray one bipartisan vote in the senate 14 milliamp draw from this one and there is some activity, but... We'll pass an aid bill for Ukraine, and it's up to Johnson to put the bill on the floor for a vote. Lori, now, Barack, you say that if you want to avoid having to file a complaint... ...in operations near the campus... Okay, Clarence, and go down and bring them down to Earth. We'll have the progress that we all want. And then Yahoo says nothing will interfere with Israel's eradication of Hamas and the ground invasion in Rafa. Israel weeks away from what he calls. 
genocide. This is some very weird performance. I don't quite know how to even describe that. Are they bad tuning capacitors? Because that's what was wrong with this other one. This one had a bad tuning capacitor in it. And this one is super 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 sensitive this is an excellent performer probably one of the best for this size radio I've ever seen this thing blows pretty much everything away but why 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 let's open one and look so I've said in just about every AM radio video if you get one of these radios no matter where it's made that doesn't work First thing you want to do is inspect the bar antenna and make sure that all of the leads are hooked up and not broken. And I think that's probably the case here because these things, they're kind of weight heavy. So if you drop the radio, they tend to pop out and break the little tiny hair wires. Let me do that first. I'm going to try and get access to this and inspect all the wires from the antenna and I almost think this is a correct statement crap that is a tiny wire Okay, so the point of this is probably, so when you're holding it in your hand, your hand doesn't cause it to drift. So let's see what we got here. God, this is horrible. Okay, but I see broken wires on this. So, I mean, regardless of whatever, there are broken wires here. And that That's got to be sorted out before anything else. Now, does the diagram show how this hooks up? It actually does. There's the co the two coils right there. And right here is how it connects. But this is not one piece of wire wrapped around. This is several pieces of wire wrapped around paralleled. I forget what they call that. I'm blanking out on it right now. You know what? Let's inspect... What was the other one that was quiet? The blue one? Let's... This one's never been opened. See, it's still got the the glue over the screw. This This is how you know it's virgin right here. This... Here's the blue one. Damn, I don't like the way these antennas are made. Oh, look at that. I know those... Those square orange disc capacitors like to just short well that one's got a piece missing off of it is that how they aligned it they just cut a little bit of it off to lower the value that 
the hell is that thing right there? It's sort of weird to me. I have it powered up again. I don't think it, even though this is broken, I don't think it uses that for shortwave. I could be wrong, but looking at the schematic, it looks like it moves from that, the bar antenna, up to these coils, and then the telescoping antenna. So it is dead on shortwave, too. I mean, there's just nothing. I'm thinking we go through and measure these voltages on the IC. They're, they are... There are voltages here. It wouldn't take that long. I just got to familiarize myself with where pin 1 is. Not that that's really going to... I guess pin 1 would be up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it skips across and goes back up. I believe that's how it goes. I don't work with enough ICs. I get rusty. This is going to be the part of the video that gets a lot of movement. So we're going to start with 1, 1 1.88, 1.88 it looks like, and then this could be ground, I guess, I don't know. 1.88, 1.88, 1 7.48. Okay. I'll try and hold this steady. Okay, 1.88, that one was supposed to be, next one 1.88, next one it looked like it was zero, uh, the next one was about the same, 1.88, that's four, okay, five is the same, 1.88, six should be 7.45, That's a little low, but not enough to make it not work. And then the next one looks like 0 0.18. 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Next one should be 0. Which it is. Next one, 0.18. find it here okay next one 1.56 oh well, that's way off if I'm on the right spot next one should be 1.56 Next one, I don't know, I'm lost. Hmm. 7.45 and 7.45. I don't know, I kind of got lost here. I must have been off one. Well. I don't know. I kind of... Kind of got lost right there. Maybe this is where we take the working radio and start switching them and start comparing them. I'm going to compare it to the blue one and you can hear there's audio activity. So I'm going to just compare it. Uh, I did figure this out. It is all the voltages are right, but let me just compare it. Well, in the blue one, I could see the IC might be bad because the voltages are, are very far off. Um, let's just compare a few of these. It, and maybe I should start and try and see why the B plus is low, but in this one, it's 0 0.54, 5.4, I'm sorry, and the blue one, 4.7. And some of them, like down here, uh, let's see, this one is 1.5 volts. That's about what it's supposed to be. 
So that's the third one up. On this one, it's 0.8 volts. The, the, something's up with this one. The, the voltages are fairly close on this IC. They're not here at all. Maybe I should start by trying to see why the B plus is so low. Well, I started following this line back. 14 and 16 are tied together. 14 and 16. And they come back to here, and I look up on top of here, and what do we have there? That's nice. That might make not working. But what is that? That's a yellow, purple. That's a yellow, purple, orange. That's 4.7K, right? I don't even see where... There's a 47K. Oh, it is 47K. I'm sorry, I'm being stupid. It, yellow, purple, red would be 4.7, not yellow, purple, orange. Too early in the morning. So I wonder if we check here, we have 4.6 volts. Over here, we have 4.6 volts. It's like it doesn't even bother it that it's broken. How about this one? Five point four volts. Five point four volts. Well, what the hell? Ciertamente, todos enfrentaremos luchas y desafíos. Tendremos que escalar montañas. Pero Jesús está con nosotros. Okay, let's cheat a little bit here. I'm going to look at see if we can see the oscillator on the one that's working. I don't know what information this is going to give us, but are we going to? Assume that it's high side injection, so yeah, 900 megahertz is. Let's do um, start as one megahertz and stop as uh, two megahertz, right? Now, some of that could be trash because I ran it down and I got the charger hooked up to it. I don't see it there. Uh, Okay. Yeah, the stupid charger generates all that. Oh, there it is. It's right here. So that's it. Uh, come on, stay on it. That's at one megahertz, right? Yeah, one megahertz. Um, let's do 800 kilohertz. There we go. Pretty weak, it's pretty well shielded. You're listening to AM 1430 KMRB, San Gabriel, Los Angeles, a multicultural radio broadcasting station. Oh, that's just what we need. It's just what just what America needs more of. More let's see. Center. Start, stop. Let's make it three megahertz. There it is. Oh, 
what is that? 2.076. Maybe, maybe that that's probably right. Right. Well, look at the chunkies on the side right there. So we can see if the oscillator is running in these. Well, this is interesting. The red one has a nice, and it's starting to work. Look at how nice and fat that is. And look at it's the same size throughout the whole span where the other one was getting smaller. This is the one with the broken antenna coil that I screwed with. This one's working. It's just quiet. Well, now it's not working again. Uh, there's something with this antenna. You know what I'm not seeing in these radios is standard electrolytic capacitors. Is that what these little white boxes are? Is that what those are? Yeah, there's something. one has an intermittent somewhere this is the one with the broken wires on the antenna but like I said it's it's five or six wires paralleled so as long as one of those is making it I guess some of these type of problems can be so hard to find Look at it with a magnifying glass. Well, one problem is this volume control. It only turns about a quarter of a turn and then it gets stuck. Where this one... Something wrong with the volume control to start out with. Okay, this is the blue one. And this one might be a better specimen to try and get working. Because the red one's got some hard problems. Obviously the antenna's got issues in the volume control. But this one we have no oscillator here. Nothing. So maybe I'll tack a resistor on the back. I don't know if that's going to do it. I tacked on a replacement 47K. I don't expect it to make a difference. I don't know. It looks like it's just paralleled across a coil. And yeah. Uh, these white things are electrolytic capacitors. Maybe I should check some of them. I'm not familiar with these at all. I've never seen these little... I've never... I've never seen these little white box capacitors before. Well, all the ESR on these... Or I should say, the ESR on all these white capacitors checks out good. So, uh, and maybe they're shorted? I don't know. Anyway, this is the volume control off the red one, and I'm not really sure exactly what's going on with this. Why it, it only turns literally a quarter turn and then binds up. 
the the leads are like glass on these things too they just break off when you try and bend them but that's it that's as far as it'll turn so i think maybe the blue one because the maybe we should abort on the red one even though the red one was working it's got the torn up antenna got the torn up antenna and it's got the bad volume control maybe we should try and fix the blue one the blue one has the broken resistor and doesn't work I should ohm out let me ohm this out before we go any further well this is the blue one and I'm trying to measure the resistance of the antenna coils just to verify and I'm finding a broken solder joints right here and these are broken this is not this is not a time stamp with a bad solder joint these are broken I'm gonna solder those I fixed those solder joints and I verified the switch with the ohm meter let's give it power uh, 15 milliamps I forget what this one was Still nothing. This is the blue one that had the broken resistor. Can't get this one to work. Has a good volume control, good antenna. This is the red one. We did get this one to work intermittently. Bad volume control, uh, bad antenna. I'm measuring the resistance, okay? So this is the resistor that was broken right here. And that resistor is just in parallel with this coil, but that coil is also in parallel with two pins of the IC. So I'm measuring across this. So on the blue radio, measuring across that, we have basically a dead short. If I could hold it on there, we have uh, 0.1 ohm. Measuring across that same point on the red radio, we have 3 ohms. So what's shorted? Is it the IC or is it the coil or is it something else? Because if you follow these two leads right here, grab me a pointer. These two leads right here, they come and they connect directly across these two pins of the IC. Probably more likely the IC is shorted. I wonder what this is. What is XA7? Oh, maybe I made a boo-boo here. I see a solder bridge right there. I make boo-boo. God, quality control issues. Okay, now we got four ohms there. Let's power it up again. One of these times it's going to work. And, well, it's not this time. We still don't have an oscillator running. I took this out and checked it. It's actually okay, and it's for the short wave, so I don't care about that. I'm starting to think it's this IC that's bad. Starting to think, it, 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 and this interesting is this one is from 92. This one is from 90. They made this radio for some years, didn't they? Since it's like epically super mega easy on this radio to check this tuning capacitor, and I have seen these go bad on these Soviet radios quite a bit, I'm going to check it. Um, the, these are not the same as Japanese or American at all. They're not interchangeable. They are, uh, let me see here. Those are the trimmers. They are 4 to 270 picofarads for both sections. See, 4 to 270 and 4 to 270. They are not the same as the rest of the world so let's see uh, basically what we got is we got ground which is also tied to the center post here that rotates on like a brush and then we got the two separate which I've disconnected out of circuit I've got these disconnected out of circuit so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a real crude test here so I turned it I'm gonna turn it here I'm going to turn it some more here. I'm going to turn this up here. So that looks like that's working because that's about 200 picofarads. Now I'm going to go over to the other side and they should track. 
which get that in frame I'm gonna turn it to about half then I'm gonna bring this down so that looks good then I'm gonna move this over here to the other section that capacitor is good I'm really looking at that integrated circuit. I did ohm out these red capacitors. I don't see any that are shorted. I'm really looking at that integrated circuit because it had a bunch of bogus voltages on it. I just hate to do that. These ICs are supposed to be very sensitive to heat when you solder them. Wow, I think I just found the woman who built this radio. Empath, healer, and medicine woman. Do you want some ketamine? I normally meditate with this. DJ has really tapped into source energy. Do you want some coke? It's from Peru. It's super pure and holistic. I have MAOI. It's low dose ayahuasca. It's going to open up that crown chakra. Do you want to take this DMT LSD? My shaman combined them both. You're going to feel like oh, you're yes. in a different dimension. Let's transcend. Oh, yes. Have some camba. It's frog poison. I'm going to have to burn your skin to put the poison on. You're going to vomit a bunch. But this next DJ, he plays lo fi house music, so you're really going to vibe. While you're so there. when I see something like this, with this stray capacitance of this big long wire going to the tuning capacitor, I think of this. All about love and connection and both and spreading both, always. It's time to put all this stuff in a box and take a little break from it. I got a computer monitor I need to fix. I did order a couple of those integrated circuits, the TCA version or whatever the version I can get is. I don't want to try and remove the one from here and install it in here since they are sensitive to heat and probably static. Um, I'm not really equipped. I don't think I really have the delicate equipment to do that. So I'm going to wait for a new one to come. Then I'll socket it and put it here. Socket will add more stray capacitance, lengthening the leads. But on this thing, check this out. This is the IC, pin 1 through 8, pin 9 through 18. How does that work? How does that work? Maybe it needs some of that, uh, whoever did this, it needs some of that frog poison. Well, I was thinking about it, and I remembered that I thought I had ordered some of these ICs, 174HA2, from Russia back before it was decided that I couldn't was not allowed to buy buy stuff from a country that uh, maybe I wanted to buy stuff with. That It was decided for me that it was in my best interest not to do business with that country. But yes, um, 174 XA2. Uh, let me get this opened up. I think these are them. Well, this is interesting. It looks like they're wrapped in aluminum foil. I guess if you don't have static uh, static shielding, then this is what you use, right? Okay, I remember now. This is the military-grade gold-plated version. See the little triangle symbol there? That's the military-grade. I remembered I ordered this and two of the FETs back when I was working on this one because I thought it was the, the IC that was bad with this one. So this is like the super, but I only could get one. And this was expensive, I think. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't really want to put this into a non-working unit. I would hate to put that because you can, I can't get this now. So I'm going to order up the replacement ones, the generic replacements. Aluminum foil, okay. All right, I pulled the one out of the red radio. We know it works or it worked before. But I try not to overheat it. What I did is I re like unsoldered these pins and these pins and these pins and these pins. And I took my time and I didn't get it real hot. I can't put a socket because this crystal filter right here that white box too close to the holes. So I'm going to try and drop this one in. IC has been replaced. I don't know. Let's see what happens. An initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Well, 
Guess I got it right. I see it's got some AGC delay there if you li listen. Wow. I think that's 1090 out of Tijuana. Wow, if it's got that that strong. So one of these is... It's not that one. Not that one. Interesting. I would have thought one of these was the oscillator and the other one was the antenna. Station is this? What station is this? So yeah, this is 1090 out of Tijuana, the mighty 1090. That's impressive. Seven highest ranked teams by the college football. We have 
knee pain? So why is there... This is turned the wrong way for this station. The antenna needs to be this way. I'm actually pointed at the transmitter, so I'm at the null. Okay, these must be for shortwave one and two. I, I think we got a winner here, and I, I think these trimmers are not for AM. These trimmers are for the shortwave. Notice our current, our idle current now is 11 milliamps, not 15. So that integrated circuit was bad. I'm trying to understand why turning these variable caps doesn't have make a difference. And I'm finding another solder bridge right here. Right here, that's not supposed to be bridged. That is not bridged on this one. See that? What is up with that? Liar and deceitful and not worthy of following. But the fact that, and I say fact because I believe that the historical resurrection is a fact. And when you... Okay, so the sensitivity is a little bit better with that resistor out of there. So I'll take it back out. Well, now I got an intermittent on the circuit board and I can't find it. Those problems can be so hard. Here it is on shortwave. I'll tell you what that noise is. That is the mercury vapor yard light coming on right now. No, I did not find the intermittent in the circuit board. I couldn't find it. Uh, when I found when the circuit board is wedged in the plastic here, it's held in a position to where it doesn't flake out so far. What we're going to do is we're going to take this out to the desert with this one. I think this one's this was the one that worked but doesn't seem to work right. I think this either has a bad tuning cap or a bad IC in it. Um, maybe we'll take a quick look at this one. I don't know. And we're going to compare them to this. I picked this up in the, at the swap meet for 10 bucks. You can buy this on Amazon for between 10 and $20. This radio works unbelievably good and sounds amazing on AM. It, it sounds amazing. It's got that stupid stepped tuning thing. The fidelity of this thing is amazing. Seriously, because he knew more. I thought I could tell this though. Y no cuares mal, más aún es. Yo lo ando ya. 
，两个民主党争十一月啦。咁所以即系。It's almost all foreign language now. Gee, I wonder why. AM is now the uh, the official band of the border. This so this sounds like a tin can compared to this. This thing's amazing. We got to see how it performs out in the jungle, but I bet it's awesome. You want to see what the oscillator looks like? There it is. Let's listen to this one again real quick. Actually, you know what? The performance is exactly the same. I started at the top of the band on both of them. And just started going down, checking each station side by side. The performance is exactly the same. This one might be a little quieter than this one, but that's because I went through and peaked the uh, capacitor, the trimmer in there. Um, the problem with this one is that wiper, that ground wiper that I was talking about that grounds this shaft. There's like a brush, a ground wiper. It's just dirty. It just needs this done to it. It needs to be used. Of course, and they were listening to AM radio. Okay, so I'm going to go to the bottom on both of these. Okay. For fishing chaos. What is fishing chaos? You're going to find out. I had you on. I had to book you on X the other day. Ooh. Congratulations. California's number one fishing honey and security sports retailer. You know, about some of the most interesting lineups we saw against the Memphis Grizzlies on. One stop shop for fishing tackle. Stand by fishing tackle. Okay, this one is sucking at the bottom of the band. I think it's that dirty capacitor. Just needs to be used. But it won't get this station at all. It'll get the next one up. Yeah, this one is suffering at the bottom of the band. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one's sucking at the bottom of the band. In fact, I think this is the one where we saw the oscillator getting smaller at the lower end of the band, right? That could be the capacitor. Maybe we should take this capacitor out of here and put it in here. If the capacitor's jacked up and it's not tracking right, if the two sections aren't tracking right. But I'll tell you this, this thing, this one is the one to get. This one is going to smoke both of these because this one has the fat in the front end. Okay, this is the station that this one wouldn't get. This one gets a station that this one can't get. Like I said, this one just smokes everything. Software design for companies like Samsung, Smart Things. Maybe that's it right there. Guess that this is a test lady is gone again. This one is a DXing machine, okay? Now, I don't know how it's going to compare to this one. I guess I could try that real quick. Let's see. Um, has this gotten boring yet? Yeah, this one blows all of them away. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these out to the desert, plus the new Panasonic. I can't find where I put it, but I'll find it before the trip. And this is how I expect these to perform. This will be the worst, second worst, a little bit better, and then the best. The problem here is this one is impossible to tune. That stepped tuning with the variactor, whatever they call that, um, where it's, you know, it's digital, you're going in steps with this type of thing. Now, the performance of this would be excellent if it was a digital display and you were stepping through it, but with this type of variable resistor digital crap. But the sensitivity and sound quality of this is going to blow everything away. Uh, and then this is going to come in probably a close second performance-wise. I don't know where the Panasonic will come in, but we'll find out. It should be close to this, but I don't know. This thing seems exceptional. Well, this is not a good thing. That, that, that bearing is gone. And I mean, it's gone. 
and kind of at a bad spot. So it looks like I can do this. Uh, just go with the non-AC version of the vehicle and get around this AC compressor. Um, called Local Napa and they got the belt for the non-AC version of this. So I'm thinking about, because I got about another 20 miles up the road, I'm thinking about just taking the belt off and hopefully the air, if I keep the speed up enough, the air will turn the water pump. The air will turn the fan. The air blowing through the radiator will turn the fan and pump enough water. Uh, I'm trying to get the the belt off. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of tools because we're going out hiking and I don't like leaving tools in a vehicle that's unattended. I guess I should buy one of those Chino cheapy tool kits from Harbor Freight. Belt is off. Smoked. So, the theory here is, I won't have alternator or power steering, but if I keep the speed up, the should act as a wind turbine, right? The air blowing through the radiator should turn this. We'll see. Nope, that ain't gonna happen. And just touching that thing, it was so hot. Even through the gloves, I burned the hell out of my finger. And yeah, I'm sitting here picking at it and pulling the dead skin off. I'm sort of, start of figure, starting to figure out how to do this. So what I do is I get it up to speed and then I put it in neutral. And I shut the key off and kill the engine. And then I just let it coast. until the temperature comes back down. He's on his way with the belt, you know, the guy I'm meeting. But this is just killing time and having fun and overheating the engine. Probably stretching the head bolts. Okay, I'm starting to figure this out. The pump is turning because I'm getting hot air out of the heater. So if I just sort of keep my foot out of it, it seems like I'm making it but the problem is is having the heater on you got a 25 amp motor sucking off a battery that's not charging so anyway just something to play with i guess yeah before i was just like stomping the accelerator all the way to the floor if i don't do that uh it seems okay That happened really fast, too. I would say 20 miles. But anyway, we got our new belt here. Uh, it just deleted that, get that thing out of the circuit, so that should be good. After thinking about this, I believe what happened is the compressor, this portion back here, locked. Because I left at 4 a.m. to go on this trip, and... Uh, there was a lot of humidity and fog on the windshield, so I had defrost on, which automatically turns the compressor on to dry out the air. So I have a feeling the compressor locked and the clutch was slipping until the heat got so bad that it just completely burned it up. I'm tempted to dissect this. I might do that on the other ch my channel on the other platform. I you should really stay in your own lane on uh, YouTube and you know we're not an automotive repair channel here so try and just uh, stick to TVs and radios as much as we can so anyway I believe that's what happened the compressor locked which probably threw a bunch of metal in that into the condenser so probably the first thing I should do is there's a filter screen on the uh, on the little expansion tube, I'm not calling it the right right name, I'm going to get a bunch of static for that, but um, yeah, I forget what they call it, something, they're little colored tubes in Ford, and so this thing probably ground itself up, started slipping here, and then smoked this whole thing. Alright, we're back out in the wilderness, 
before we even start our hike, we're going to compare these three radios real quick. The two Olympics and the Nivsky. Of course, the blue one is the one we fixed that seemed to perform better than the gray one. So I'm going to hand the camera off here and we'll do a quick scan because I don't want to carry all this weight. So this is the gray one. Absolutely nothing. Oh, wait. That's it picking up the camera. Let's try short way real quick. I hear a little sideband there. Yeah. But nothing on broadcast. Yeah, I'll agree with that. That was the right statement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this one is, in fact, quite a weight compared to the gray one. Back to the gray one, just because that was such a huge difference. Yeah, this is dead. Something yeah. wrong with this. I mean, it worked good in the city, but that's why we bring them out here. Okay, this is the Nivsky, which is essentially the same circuit as this one, but this one has a fat front end, so this one should be a better performer. You can hear it's much noisier just right off the... I mean, like... Okay, so of course this one performs better, but it sure does have a lot of background noise. Okay, we're going to take this one and three new ones and the blue one. And when we get hiked up away from the road here, we'll do a more thorough test. So this is another, we're hiking up to a mine. We're going to stay in the mine and we're going to test out radios starting to get hot out here the sun is brutal see this i forgot to show you this see that little thing you could move this oh, wow. see that Fancy. isn't that high tech yeah that's i like that angle top left top left yeah. i like the top right but most people do the bottom right sure. look at me i'm selling tv antennas So, there it is. We'll get up here and test out a whole bunch of radios. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to check these out. Um, we have the Olympic 402. Then we have the Von Dior, however you say it, swap meet radio. Uh, the Panasonic, the Nivsky, Niv, whatever, 402. And then this this thing and I'd like to first start off and give China a shout out and thank them for the low cheap low quality products that help fund them in taking my country over so we'll start with which one which one we start with let's do the blue one the blue one okay yeah, work this is down. the one that we're radio the video is about so and we're kind of down in a hole here
Maybe being down in a hole is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Try this one on shortwave real real quick. Okay. Nothing. Can't believe we're only getting one. Okay, well then we'll go to the Von Dior. Probably have to come back and do this at night. It's just a Von Diant. There we go. There was a comment on a previous video that radio is doomed because there are no radios for sale anymore. And yes, there are a lot of radios for sale. So that was uh, not a real comment. That step tuning is just... Not, not, nothing, nothing kicking ass there really is there. Let's go to the Panasonic. Listen to the sound quality difference between these two. Well, I guess I'll visit my California Ford dealer today to get America's best-selling truck for 46 years in This thing is high fidelity compared to this. Yeah. Okay. Which one are we doing next? We'll go do this one. All right, yeah. I'm interested in this thing. And this would really benefit from a long wire, which I did bring. But this is a very cool radio. It's not cheap, but it is very cool. And we have the oh, China wow. China boot up logo. And you can adjust the bandwidth here. Can you see that in there? Yeah, Four kilohertz. Mm -hmm. So we can adjust it up to eight kilohertz bandwidth, which is kind of cool. Had to get the step right. I'm on the wrong band. Now that's long wave, which doesn't exist. That's in the dirt to swing. There we go. Yeah, but Noah Miller is in uniform. I hear something there. I do too.
See if there's anything coming in on uh, Citizens Band. But the problem is this only goes up to 27 megahertz, which is stupid. Why not make it go up to 28, and then it reverts back to 1710? So this needs some software adjustments. Oh. Ooh. Honky tonk. <laughs> Twenty six nine six five is CB channel one. Okay. Too bad it doesn't do channel six. I mean, just just wow. solid, intelligent communication. Yep. Sure, try it on FM. Yeah, let's give that a shot. Try ninety five one. NPR. It's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> Nine, two, three, yeah. Wow. What gets me is how quiet it is. There's not a lot of background static or hiss. You know, sensitivity is signal to noise ratio. So what we should do is just keep this rolling. What was the NPR? Oh, I don't remember. It was like 90 something. Try the Von Dior on FM. Mm. We're really stepping into quality. <laughs> No. Not at all. No. No. Fat, fat chance. Let's go to the Panasonic on FM. This is probably a very crude way to actually test these radios. <laughs> it's probably a... This is the best way to test these radios. No. No. I, I, I don't think anything is going to outcompete this. I don't think anything's going to... No. Nothing's going to get close to this. This is based on... This is a Guzizu. G-O-O-Z-E-E-Z-O-O. -E -E and it's a TEF6686, and that's the chip it's based on as a TEF6686. So that's 6 kilohertz. Maybe the first night game, maybe two. Guys still getting adjusted, but... Eight. No problem with the vision here. I'm going to go to three. Mr. Donger pitching's been really good. Two balls and a strike to Hernandez. Kirsten giving us the report on Blake Trinan.
That's good at narrowing it down when you're trying to do DX. You can narrow it down to three kilohertz, but it doesn't make it makes it sound like crap. Okay, let's try the uh, Nivsky. The noisy Nivsky. If I could find. That's a station. It's just buried in the noise. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what my thoughts are here. I mean, if you want... <clears throat> If you're looking for a cheap modern pocket radio, I think the Von Dior yeah. is definitely for the sound quality and performance for 20 bucks. And it doesn't even have a model number on. Oh, VX, maybe Von Dior VX. I mean, you can't beat this thing. This thing, you know, mm -hmm. for for whatever it costs is uh if you want Soviet the performance on this is better, but it's noisy. I don't know if that's a problem with it or if it's just noisy. Um, if you want a novelty radio or if you like colors and pictures of birds, then probably the Olympic. I don't really... I guess this has some more shortwave coverage. And um, that thing, they just need to update the software on it so that it's continuous get rid of long wave we don't need that anymore and get it so it goes up to 30 megahertz um and you know maybe put sideband decoding on it because that that goes from long wave all the way up to to what 26 megahertz mm -hmm. or 20, 27 it really should go to 30 and that would that would be an awesome radio with just some software up changes. Nothing's going to beat that, but it's pricey. It's a, it's like a buck sixty shipped, but it's worth it performance wise. Nothing, like I said, the Russian SDR doesn't even come close to that thing. So uh, I think we're going to put all this away and try and go into this mine and look around. So maybe we'll try this later tonight. We're at a different location now, and we're a little bit more exposed, but you can see the sun there. We're at gray line. Gray line is sundown, and if you're from this area, if you're working 10 or 20 meters, you you get Japan, Hawaii, Russia. You get that that direction there if you're doing ham, ham radio. Um, we're going to try these. Radios will start with the Guzizu, and that's K and X. Because this doesn't have a coiled antenna, I'm going to stretch out a, I don't know if you'd call it a long wire, but it's a few feet longer than this antenna. It actually seems like it works better without the long wire. Here's the long wire right here, and it's going to that. Thing I set up out there, but if I touch a long wire to it, yeah, that kills it. Mm -hmm. You can hear the adjacent information. We should be able to get that. See how shrinking the bandwidth gets all that 
side noise out of it. Yeah. Is the former head coach at Texas A&M and FSU. 1090, that's out of Tijuana. Joining us here on... Affect you uh, uh, seating for the NCAA tournament. God, pay for us, and All that damn noise, that's another problem with this thing. All that squealing, that shouldn't be there. That's a problem in the radio. If we get anything, you know, CB radio. I want my CB radio. Yeah. It's in the 160 meter band, but you can't decode side bands. So, well, let's do this. The squealing noises almost kill this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just got downgraded. sunset so things are still not quite stabilized but KNX is coming in a little bit stronger here that squealing bothers me because that doesn't need to be there here's what KNX sounds like right now on the noise machine I think we're going to put all this away and try and go into this mine and look around. So maybe we'll try this later tonight. 
I mean, if you wanted to, there's a small, like, cavernous place here we could camp. The, the, temp the temperature's pretty good right here. I said the temperature's pretty good right here. Yeah. See this area? Getting the packs down here is going to be something else. But. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, that's not too bad. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the right lighting down with me. I apologize for that. Let's see if I can bring this one up a little bit. There we go. So low, low CRI light. it faces out it's hot in here you can see right here right here this is talc this is the country rock that's a very very defined that's your fault right there that's your fault between the talc and the country rock. Very, very defined, clear cut change. There you can see it right there. The talc and the country rock and the fault between them. And there again, there's the fault with the country rock on the bottom and talc on the top. Here again. Wow, the faults are so distinct in this mine. The... Yeah, it's pretty big, isn't it? I mean, it's... But well, <laughs> got the wrong lighting. I got this damn low CRI hot spot in the middle of everything. Pretty lousy. It does get way more vertical down there, just like the specifications state. I mean, 
what this is 30 degrees i don't think so and then it turns to 65 down there wow wow where did all that go that must be the next level right there Man, there's a big ass ballroom over here. So you call a. That's sizable for this. Well, Yeah, it looks all insignificant from the surface, but then it's Seriously. like. This is very deceptive. We got that level right there. You going to try and do it? Yeah. I'll give it a shot. The ladder is pretty chlorcobrophilated. Yeah, so, unfortunately, this damn uh, Phoenix light the so had a software failure. Uh, probably the worst damn, one of the worst LED lights I have. Hate to say that, but it's true. Now it's just like 100% or nothing. I lost, I lost the ability to adjust the brightness on it, and I've tried resetting it, and Ah, oh, low CRI. Anyway, just looking up, you can see the outside. Okay, let me let me go this way. Okay. This thing is just freaking software to find lights. What's wrong with the, where's the old school mag light that's so damn dim you can't see anything and that burns out and eats batteries and it's good, it's a good weapon though. Yeah. That's, that's about it. Yeah, but I'll stick with my Sofren lights. Those have been the, the best. Wow. This is, I believe this is called spiling. And this was a, this collapsed at one time. And they spiled this back open. It's where you drive them up at a, you drive the wood in at an angle. I mean, it's like five layers. Anyway, I got this nice handhold here. So if the ladder breaks, then you fall and you pull the roof down on top of you which is kind of cool.
Look at that right there. Is that awesome or what? Wow. Eh, just heat it up with a torch and make an S out of it. Wow. Check that out. That just clercosprofulates. There's the bottom, though. There's artifacts down there. I can see them. Man, this damn thing is put together. Oh, there's another drift right there. There's another S. Oh, here's another S. You got to appreciate the ingenuity of these people because they... They're very hands-on. They know... Wow. They know how to build this stuff. Yeah, it's almost vertical here. That's 65 degrees? Damn. Um, I put camera away and turn around and go down ladder like normal human being. I really don't like that rock hanging out there. That That is very scary. What is this? Or Are you coming? I'm coming? You'll see that that rock that's just just very slow and very don't don't set that loose. That's a grease bucket. To lubricate things. That's the end right there. Okay. Go back and cross over and go the other way. Are you near that blue rock? Yes. Uh, let me get out of your way before you set that thing free. Oh, look at here's some of those bolts. This is what those look like. It's kind of cool. This rock came from. Here's a flexible airline. There's a fitting for it.
kind of cool. Empty at once and return to SoCal. Portland ore. What? What the hell is it? What was it? Oh, that drum? Yeah. Nineteen oh two. Patent June nineteen oh two. I mean what what the hell was in it though? Oh, no. It's not light. No. Well you get out of the mine and you got this. What do you think? Stay outside or stay down there? Let me get up there first. Okay. <laughs> I want to feel how it is out there. Well, you're going to be hot. There you go. Pretty nice out. It's going to be in the 40s tonight. It's not easy, is it? What? It's not easy, is it? No. <laughs> Climbing slippery soapstone up that. Okay, we decided to hang out underground. It's much, much nicer down here. Much, uh, it's not as flat, but it's nice and warm and it's pretty dust free. So, and the music sounds great because you're in this echo chamber. And for dinner we have this, plus that, plus canned chicken. I find I save a lot of weight by doing this versus, what are you eating, an MRE? Yeah, beef goulash. Be beef, rice. oh yes. So we're underground on this first level and I decided to pull the radios out. I'll show you something pretty interesting here. You wanna grab that? So we're getting a little something there. 
Oh, it's the same station. Yeah. And I think this has a lot to do with the antenna type because that's just a sticky antenna. But check this one out. Hardly intelligible, but it's picking up quite a few stations. So again, 1090 is out of Tijuana. I, you know, I don't know why KNX is so damn weak now. I think when they, I think when they turned, when they got that FM thing, they turned the power down on the AM and just didn't tell anybody. Well, let's see if 1090 comes in here. No. Well, I thought it was coming in here. It must have just been a passing thing with the DX. This one definitely works better underground. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's uh, probably nine o'clock, and we're underground in the mine, just chilling out. And KCBS is KCBS is coming in, which is out of the San Francisco Bay Area. Of course, it's going to stop as soon as I pick up the camera. Each one of those counts as one drink. Well, the Von Dior is Von Dioring big time down here. The other take home point is if you have underlying health conditions or take certain medications, even those levels may not be safe. And cutting it down to complete avoidance of alcohol may be the best in those that have high risk medical conditions or on medications that may interact with alcohol. Doctor, before I let you go, I want to talk just a little bit about this idea that alcohol is good for you. you know, for years we've been hearing red wine is good for your health, specifically your heart. Where are we on that today? Yeah, it's, there's a great, that's a great question and there's a lot of data. Oh, that's a great so question. Patients, if they don't drink, I don't tell them to drink to get that benefit. If they already drink, then I say it's probably okay as long as you're staying within those guidelines. Oh, and then it goes into a freaking commercial for pre-diabetes. <laughs> okay, well, it's the next morning. And today was time change, whatever that is. So I have no idea what time it is. Uh, so packing up. I think after this whole thing, uh, I'm going to say the Von Dior radio is the best for the money. Because I was listening to it on and off last night. And it was picking up KCBS out of the Bay Area clean. Yeah, I think the Von Dior. Von Dior. Von Dior. You ready to get your Von Dior on?